Welcome back gang, it's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com. I've recently got Emperor for a third time on my Magic Templar and it's revitalized my love for PvP and Elder Scrolls Online. I'm not the best PvPer and I'm not the best Emperor, but I do have top 5 tips to give you if you're looking for the most coveted achievement and experience in Elder Scrolls Online. But first, what does it mean to become an Emperor? How do you get it? How do you maintain it? And is it even worth getting? If there were one highlight to show my experience as Emperor and how much fun I had, it would be this one. Essentially, when I became Emperor, a bunch of people came over to our campaign, the non-CP campaign, trying to throw me. We had both factions at our last keep, almost every single wall down in the keep, on both sides, fighting and defending with only a small group of friends. It was so much fun. As you can see here from this highlight, you're just a walking juggernaut machine. You're tanking, healing, doing damage to like 15, 20 people, and they just can't kill you. It is by far the coolest and most fun experience you will ever have in this game. You have to at least get it once or go down swinging and try Emperor is pretty simple. You have to have the most alliance points in your faction when your faction controls the innermost keep. So you see right here all these around Imperial City. Also, you have to have over 50,000 alliance points after the campaign resets, which means if a campaign flips, you get one more keep and you have 10,000 AP, you're not going to become Emperor. No one will be. Once you've got Emperor, you and your faction will get to receive an Emperor bonus, essentially giving you a whole lot more of health. You individually will get another skill line under here alliance war assault and support essentially what it does is it almost double your effectiveness it's going to double your stats almost it's going to double your regeneration while in combat your ultimate game your siege weaponry increase your magnitude of healing that you do so it's going to make you just an incredibly powerful character, as you can see from some of the highlights. So whether you're a tank, a DPS, whatever build you're running, it's going to be basically double as effective. So you maintain your Emperorship just similar to the way in which you gain it. So essentially you have to have one, just one, of the inner keeps uh, under your control. So for instance, after you take all of these keeps, you can lose all but one, and usually it's going to be one of the home keeps at the final battle. My number five tip here is being prepared. So before I started Emperor, I went and farmed up a bunch of gold and alchemy mats, and I basically made 1,500 potions. I made tripods, I made immovability potions, stealth attack pots. I went around to every single zone trader and bought every cold fire trebuchet I could find because I knew I'd need it. I'd have 200 food on me and three gear sets a solo gear set, a healer gear set, and a zerg diving gear set, along with about 500 soul gems to res people. So before I jumped in that campaign, I had every single thing I needed. So when I logged into my character, I was PvPing. Because remember, as soon as that campaign flips, it's all about earning AP. Every second you spend in an alchemy table making potions, someone else is out gaining your AP, hypothetically. So when you're being prepared, if you're going to do an Emperor push, you got to get a good start. And that's when knowing when the campaign resets. A good start is key. And that's our number four tip. Now, a lot of people think that going for Emperor, you have to be, you know, 16 years old and it's the summer and you have, you know, 20 hours to play. And frankly, that's not true. I thought that myself, but it's not the case, depending on which campaign you go to. PC, NA, really there's one active campaign, 24 hours a day, and some of the other ones are pretty inactive. What you're looking to do if you're a super busy person, have a family, have a kid like I do, is go for the camper campaign reset. Once the campaign resets, sometimes people take days off, they call in sick, they do whatever, or they just have it on the weekend. And you can really go hard for it for 24 hours and go back to work or your normal routine. And maybe you get it, maybe you don't. But at least you can have a good amount of time where you can push up up there and give it a good shot. If it doesn't work out, you can try the next campaign reset. So the way I go about doing this is you can kind of front load a lot of things to give you some boost in AP. So for instance, you could save up all these repeatable quests and then go turn them in right after the campaign resets. Usually takes about 30 to 45 minutes for the scoring to start occurring. That's going to give you a big boost in AP to kind of get out in front of everyone. Just remember that a people, no offense to people, but they're fickle. If they're not right ahead right away, a lot of people will start quitting. So you on campaign reset nights, you're going to see a whole lot of people. Everyone wants to get Emperor. They want it the easy way, not the hard way. Just remember, keep at it. 
keep front loading all those quests, turn them in at about 30, 45 minute mark, and get the AP boost. I'm telling you, this thing is mean. Let me explain. I see very pe few people in Cyrodiil with the Alliance Point boost, and it's very simple to get. All you need to do is go into the dungeon and kill one of the bosses. Then you're going to be granted 60 minutes of AP boost or 20% of your Alliance Point gain. It's absolutely imperative you're going to get this to start the campaign and try to maintain it as best you can. Now, there's specific areas in each faction that you can get. So Daggerfall Covenant, usually the easiest one is Nickel. There's a good place below Bruma as well. EP has one in areas, and I, I don't know where AD goes. But just remember that every time you go down here, you may be losing AP. So you have to have risk-reward. Are you fighting at a keep that's going to be a very long fight and you might get a humongous D-tick? Don't go down here and get it. Are you having a break in action, you and your team are taking five minutes? Go down here and get it. It's very, very simple once you get in here. Just keep in mind if you're playing with the group, sometimes load screens will happen and bug you out. So you can see right here, this is the guy you need to kill, Lion Fang. Once you kill him, you go on out, you got your 60 minutes of AP boost, and this will give you a huge, huge bonus to getting AP, I'm telling you. Don't forget the sucker. Another thing I don't think people understand is how movement works in Cyrodiil now, especially with the town captures, uh, making them crucial to get. The downside about town captures is someone can solo them, so you, on a big large campaign you might take some of these towns and they go back to the original owners right away. So they're right here and up here. The simplest way to move around is blood porting. Everyone can come here to Mage's Guild and get this, or you can use a Ravage Health Potion. Transit on Outpost is unavailable, so if you're at an outpost and you just got a D-Tick and all a bunch of enemies are heading to Robeck, the simplest way to get back there isn't to walk back to All's Well. It's just to simply do this. Use Equilibrium, get down health, and then jump off. Do-do-do. Yes, it kills your kill-death ratio, but who gives a crap about that? You're trying to get AP. So you got to find little tricks like this to get to places much faster. There's even some crazier things you can do, like getting this Cyrodiil's Ward set, three-piece. Increase movement speed while mounted by 15%. So what a lot of people will do is if they have to ride from a keep to a resource, or let's say going from Bro to Brindle, they'll put three pieces of Cyrodiil's Ward on. They'll also go ahead and grab the Alliance War skill, retreating maneuvers. On PC and A, you can actually set up a macro to do this, clicking one button. No, this isn't macroing attacks or anything, it's just re-equipping your gear. And so you can really move around the battlefield a lot faster doing a couple of things like this. A lot of people ask me, Delta, how do you make a lot of AP? Well, I'm just going to show you. In this three minute clip, I make about 10,000 AP. Now I'm playing solo, but really you need to have a good solo build or a good, good group build. Now I like defending versus going on offense. There's really no fights going out around on the map, and Nickel is the only keep that's lit up, or the only outpost. So I'm going here, I see 10 AD Siege. What that tells me, there's probably 15 to 20 AD trying to get this really quick. So they should have front seat the front door, so that gives me a clue they're probably inexperienced. So I'm going to come through here. They already have the door down, and my objective here isn't to go in there and Dawnbreaker and kill everyone, to just to screw with them just for a little bit. That way, more reinforcements can arrive. So they negate me, no problem. I do a couple of dodge rolls, I go back out, and like I I said i'm just trying to survive just holding on killing a few because remember we have the advantage this is no cp campaign so siege is going to really hurt and so are the guards i know that they have to come to the flags and so being an experience i go right to the flag first not up top to clear the guard so i'm going to use that to my advantage I'm just going to kind of stun them here, mess with them, almost kill one person, so now they're going to have to react to that. I'm going to keep peppering them with Siege. That's going to keep their healers busy and the DPS off of me. So I'm going to hold block here, I'm going to retreat. I'm going to where all the NPCs are. That way they have to chase me, and if they do, they will be in trouble. Now you can see one, maybe two people are starting to arrive here, and then all the guards are pulled. So it's a big advantage to me. As long as I can hold them off for just a couple more minutes and prevent them from flipping the flag, I can start killing a couple here and there. Charge in. I'm going to go to the corner and line of sight so they can't heal me. And I'm just getting one guy who doesn't peel back. I'm going to repair the ballista. And I'm just buying time. So they back off the flag. Now it's not going to flip. 
Now I can hit them with a huge ballista shot. They negate me again. I dodge roll, Dawnbreaker them, and now I'm going for the healer in the back. Okay, so their healer is down here, and I'm going to hold block, and they're not putting pressure on the other flag to flip it. So I still have the advantage. I just kind of line of sight here, uh, pull them up, and I'm looking for what they're doing next. Now top lane charge bugs out. That's always nice. Tripods back up. I got snipers on me. Now two, three people are coming in. The advantage is all me. Dawnbreaker, kill a couple more. The flags are safe so I know I can get my defensive tick if I need to. And I'm just killing people while everyone else is showing up. And so right here, we go in and kill a group of them, a small group, but that adds up since I'm a solo player. Remember every killing blow I get, it's gonna be a lot more AP for me than if I were in a group. So my top lane charge bugs out once again, go up here and I'm trying to tag every single one and get the killing blow uh, before anyone else gets it. Boom, right there, I look in the bottom right corner, 9.9K AP without a D tick. 10k AP, three minutes defending. These are examples of how you get a lot of AP, whether you're solo or in a group, just simple. Well, gang, as always, thank you so much for watching, subscribing, and sharing this video. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and, and the purpose is to help you accomplish your goal. Remember that me personally going for Emperor, I failed over and over for a year. I had people try to beat me, I had people calling in other factions to help me not get the Emperor and dethrone me, and that's okay. Remember that it's a video game. It's supposed to be for fun. Accomplishing your goal in a video game or real life is really rewarding when it comes hard and it's not easy. So keep at it. If you don't get it right away, just learn from it. But don't make excuses if you're not getting it. Learn, ask other people for help, adapt your gameplay, and you can get Emperor too, especially if I got it. See my health, I just use Igneous Shields, use Vigor, you can use Absorb Magic, a, a variety of different things. The fire does not hurt that hard, it really doesn't. In essence, run back to your team, don't panic, and get ready for the next phase. When you're running back, just use Igneous Shields, Vigor, like I said, and you can put the fire at a variety of different places. The place I put it in this video is probably not the best, we were just kind of dripping around. Uh, but yeah, you want...